Good morning from the Oklahoma Insurance Department. My name is Rachel Fan, and I work in the Communications Division here at OID. Thank you for joining us for our Medicare Mondays webinar series. For your awareness, I do want to mention that this webinar is being recorded. Before we get started, I wanted to share a little bit about what the Oklahoma Insurance Department, or OID, does. OID is a state agency, and we are responsible for regulating the insurance market and enforcing the insurance-related laws of the state. We have an entire team devoted to protecting consumers by providing them with accurate information and timely assistance. We can also deal with your insurance company if you can't reach an agreement regarding a claim. If you would like to reach out to us for help or if you have any questions, you can call us toll free at 1-800-522-0071. And you can also visit our website at oid.ok.gov. For today's webinar, you will be able to see and hear us. However, we cannot see or hear you. If you have a question, please type it in the chat at the bottom of your screen. You will see several options, one of those being chat. And if you click on that, you can type your question there. We will save time to answer questions at the end of the webinar. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker, Ray Walker. Ray is the Divisional Director for the Medicare Assistance Program at the Oklahoma Insurance Department. Mr. Walker has over 20 years of experience working in and around the healthcare industry, primarily in insurance, and has had the privilege of speaking to groups across the state and around the country. Ray, over to you. Good morning. I uh, hope everyone is doing well and adjusting to the time change and all of that good stuff. Um, want to get started because I've got a lot of slides for us to go over. And uh, Rachel, if you'll confirm that what we're looking at is the slides, I would appreciate it. Yep, Ray, we can see your screen. Excellent. Thank you very, very much. Okay, so welcome to Medicare Mondays. I want to remind everybody that our program the Medicare Assistance Program is funded by three federal grants, one of which is the State Health Insurance Assistance Program grant, which provides us with funds to go out and do education such as this, where we're teaching people about Medicare, their various options related to Medicare, et cetera. And uh, so we are gonna move forward. We have one more Medicare Monday for this year after this one. It'll be on December 4th, and that's going to be talking about some of the changes for next year. Now, I don't mean any changes that impact your decisions for open enrollment this year. We make sure that you're aware of all of those before uh, now. What we just want to make sure of is that everybody is aware of things that are going to be happening that we know of as at this point uh, with the Medicare system for next year. So we hope you can join us for that one. And then very soon we'll be coming out with our uh, plans for next year for our Medicare Monday series and what our topics are going to be for each month. So stay tuned for that information. But let's go ahead and dive into what we're going to talk about today. Oh, one more reminder. If, if by some miracle you are not aware of the fact that it is now time, Medicare open enrollment season started October 15th and it runs through December 7th. This is the time when all Medicare beneficiaries should be taking a look at what their current coverage is. You want to make sure that the coverage you've got is providing you with the healthcare coverage that you want and that you need and uh, establishing whether or not there's any uh, changes that you want to make. Are there any differences that you could make that or changes that you could make that would save you some money for the coming year? So by all means, reach out, speak to one of our counselors, see if there's something that we can help you with. We can help you do a plan review on your Part D prescription drug plan to see if there's one that's out there for this coming year that might save you some money. Uh, we can also help you do a review of the Medicare Advantage plans that are available out there. And so if you, there's anything related to that, any questions you've got about Medicare supplement policies, now's a really good time of year to ask those questions. Even if you don't want to make any changes, uh, it's just a good uh, time to review your coverage and know that you're going to be satisfied with what you've got for the coming year. Our topic for today is going to be speaking specifically to the marketing guidelines that CMS has established for plans that sell Medicare Advantage plans and Part D prescription drug plans. These plans are regulated at the federal level. They're not regulated at the state level. So these guidelines are established for everyone who uh, is selling these plans across the country. And they are standardized. 
So as I said, these guidelines, these are rules that private insurance companies that are selling these plans, they've got to follow. Uh, and we're going to talk about the difference between marketing and plan communications, as well as how and where and when a plan can market to beneficiaries. There's also been some guidance that's been created for electronic communications. Now that we've got more social media and email and things like that, that's created a need for even more regulation. We're also going to talk about the rules for marketing and communication outside of the annual enrollment period. There are certain allowances that are made during open enrollment period because that's when people need to be making these decisions and companies need more flexibility to be able to uh, reach out to clients for that information. But outside of that open enrollment period, there's not as many opportunities. They're not allowed to just reach out and, and uh, speak to anyone at any time. Uh, and they're meant to prevent people from presenting misleading information about plan costs, benefits, any of that information. Now, here are some things, and you'll notice that I've put the link on this slide. Uh, I know it's very, very hard to read because of the side, but as you know, these slides are available on our website afterwards. So if you need to go on there and look at this information or you want to pull this up yourself, by all means do so. It's got the complete list. What I'm providing you with today is sort of an abbreviated version of the, 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 the high hot items that you really need to be aware of. So let's talk about things that plan representatives are not allowed to do. For one thing, they can't ask for personal information such as your bank account or credit card information uh, over the phone unless it's needed to process the enrollment. Outside of that, I like, can't start a conversation with, oh, okay, well, let me get this information. Also, they are not allowed to come to your home uninvited. If you're interested in learning more about a Medicare Advantage plan and you would like to have someone come to your home and speak to you about it, that's fine, but you have to invite them. They can't just show up at your door. The same is true uh, if you went to an uh, education event and you signed a card that just said you'd like more information, that's not necessarily inviting them to your home. All right, so they, there has to have been actually an invitation to come to your house or meet you somewhere, and they also have to set what's called the scope of the appointment. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. They can't call you unless you've already, you're already a member of one of their plans, like maybe you're already on a United plan or a Humana plan or something like that, or you've given them permission. That would be such as if you went to an education event and you wanted somebody to call you back with more information about their products, but you have to have given them that permission and there has to be that documentation. They can't require you to speak to an insurance agent to get information about the plan. Uh, some, some plans in the past have been guilty of requiring the conversation to be with an actual insurance agent rather than some other representative that can provide you with answers to your questions. Next, they can't offer cash uh, or gifts more than a $15 uh, price on, on some kind of gift, nominal gift, uh, to join their plan. Uh, they, they're really not supposed to be offering anything to join their plan. If they're having an education meeting, then it's okay for them to offer an item valued at $15 or less to everyone who comes to the meeting. But they can't, they can't differentiate between those that sign up and those that don't sign up. They have to provide it to everybody. They also are not allowed to offer you a meal uh, during those meetings. Uh, they can have what is considered, you know, some snack items, but they're not allowed to offer a meal anymore. They can't ask you for payment over the phone or online. Uh, the company actually has to send you a bill in the mail uh, for the uh, to start collecting once you've signed up on uh, their program. They also have to be very, very careful and specific about how they word the information about their product. Over the course of the years, I can't tell you how many people that I've spoken with who thought what they had enrolled in was a Medicare supplement plan and were very shocked to find out that what they were actually enrolled in was a Medicare Advantage plan. 
And in a lot of those situations, the person really was okay with their coverage. It was providing the coverage that they needed. What they were upset about is they felt like they were misled when they purchased the product because they thought they had a Medicare supplement plan when it was an Advantage plan. So Medicare is really cracking down on agents to be very specific and make sure that their clients understand the difference between Medicare supplement and Medicare Advantage. They also can't sell you a non-health related product uh, like an annuity or a life insurance product at the same sales pitch where they're talking about Medicare Advantage plans or drug plans. That's not allowed. They can't make an appointment to tell you about their plan unless you agree ahead of time uh, to for them to come out and talk about this. And during the appointment, they're only allowed to, to try to sell you the products that you agreed to talk to them about. Prior to that appointment, I mentioned this term a little bit earlier, scope of the appointment. The agent, when you are, express your interest in speaking with them, they have to establish that scope of the appointment. And in doing so, it's like, okay, so you, you'd like for me to come out and we're going to talk about the various Medicare Advantage plans that I uh, represent and how those plans work, et cetera, and you know, possibly look at enrolling you. And they have to establish that right up front. During that plan, they're not allowed to sell you anything else that wasn't uh, established in that scope of appointment. Um, I've never witnessed this, but apparently it's happened in other parts of the country because they, they continue to keep it in the list and they continue to emphasize it. Agents aren't allowed to talk to you about their plans in areas where you get your health care, like the exam room or the emergency room uh, or your patient room or something like that. Um, that. That continues to pop up on the list. So I guess that's been a problem. So if you're in a paper gown in the ER and some agent pops in, that's a no-no. The other thing a lot of people will contact us about after we've had a presentation like this is you'll see the last one on the list here is the pharmacy counter. Um, We've all gone into various stores uh, where there is a pharmacy, a grocery store, Walmart, someplace like that, and you may see a table where there is an agent uh, representing a plan. That's okay. You'll notice that that table is not in the pharmacy area. It's usually in the front of the store or something like that, well away from the pharmacy area. So they're, they're meeting the guidelines in that situation. Oh, pardon me. Um, they can't market their plans or enroll you at what is called an educational event. Now, the difference is the the uh, plans can have an education event. These are events where they are open to the public. They, um, you know, they advertise them. They want people to come in. And at these events, they can educate them about Medicare Advantage plans, how they work, what the network is, things like that. But they're, those are not marketing events. They are not allowed to sell at those education events. Now, they can at those events say, if you would like to learn more, we will be having a marketing event. Or if you'd like to set up an appointment, you know, here's where you can sign up. That can that can occur, but it can't be required. People can't they can't make people sign on a list. Uh, that they attended the meeting or anything like that. It's got to be by choice. Uh, they can't advertise uh, to you without using specific plan names. In other words, uh, they have to make you aware of what plans they are affiliated with. This was one of the big issues that you'll, you'll remember the commercials that we were dealing with last year with Joe Namath and JJ Walker and things like that. Those commercials did not specifically mention any health plans. That is now not allowed. They have to include logos. They have to have something on there so that people know who they're talking about. We had a lot of people that were feeling very misled. They kind of thought these were government programs because they talked about saving money or helping you if you were low income and stuff like that without actually getting into the names of the, the plans themselves. 
They have to be very, very clear in their marketing information. They can't use misleading words or confusing words or images. One of the big ones that we've seen over the years, or at least that I've seen over the years, when I would go to a health fair or some other event, and I would see a booth there that had this massive uh, copy of a Medicare card in front of their booth. I mean, I would think walking up to that booth that I'm talking to someone from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. But no, it's they've blown up a, a, a agent or someone has blown up a, a Medicare card with the full understanding that that's probably what people are going to think. And then people show up there um, and they're talking to them about a plan that they're trying to sell them. So they've got to be very, very clear about that. So trust me, I'm going to be on the lookout for those and taking lots of pictures if I see them at any of the health fairs and stuff that we attend this year. Now, as far as speaking specifically about agents themselves, things that they're allowed to do during a meeting, they can give you plan materials. They can give you information to educate you about the plan. They want you to be happy with the insurance decision that you make. They, they're not trying to make people unhappy. Uh, not to mention the fact that they want you to stay on that plan. They want you to to they want it to work for you. They want you to feel like you made a good purchase. So they can give you that plan information and answer questions. They can tell you about the plan options and how to get more information about those that plan. Uh, they can give you an enrollment form. They can't make you fill it out, but they can give you a blank enrollment form that you can fill out on your own. Uh, if you filled out an enrollment form, they can also collect that form as well. They are allowed to leave you with business cards that if you choose, you can give out to friends and family. You're not required to. Uh, if you as the consumer ask, can I have a card or a couple of cards of yours? That's perfectly okay. Uh, they are not allowed to charge you a fee for processing your enrollment form. They also cannot steer you toward a particular plan. All right, and this, this ties to um, insurance, uh, the pro insurance products, the agents are paid based on commissions and not every commission for every plan is the same. They get more commission for some plans than others. That's not uncommon in our society today. That's very common in a lot of different industries. So insurance is no different but they're not supposed to be steering you to a particular plan just simply because their reimbursement is more. So I always encourage people, and this is what I said in our last webinar, insurance is like any other purchase that you're making, you need to shop around. Talk to more than one person. Learn what your options are. Uh, we at the Oklahoma Insurance Department and the Medicare Assistance Program, we can do a comparison for you. We can help you see what those different prices are in a non-biased, we don't get any money from insurance company manner, and at least you know what your options could be. Uh, they also can't communicate incorrect information about their plan type or use inappropriate statements like their plan is the best or it's the highest ranked. Now, in the Medicare uh, uh, on a plan finder, they have got a five-star rating system. That's not the same as this. The five-star rating system is based on consumer feedback and things like uh, efficiency of claims processing and that sort of thing, referrals, all of that kind of thing. That five-star rating system is actually done by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And they're not establishing who's the best or the highest ranked because more than one plan could have a four-star rating, a five-star rating, it, it's it's not a best, it's not a first, second, or third place situation. They can't tell you that other plan options you haven't agreed to discuss. The like I said, that scope of the appointment, you you they have to have set up front that we're going to talk about Medicare Advantage plans, or we're going to talk about Medicare Advantage plans and Part D drug plans, something like that. If there is another product that you as the consumer would like to talk to them about, that's fine, but you would have to set up a separate appointment on a separate appointment form. Now, also, high-pressure tactics, big no-no. They can't say, oh, you're running out of time. Now, they can say that 
open enrollment ends on such and such date. That's different. But if you feel like you're being pressured to make a decision right that minute, that's not allowed. Um, they also, if you don't sign up right now, you're not going to have coverage for next year. All of those kind of statements are inappropriate and not allowed, and they need to be reported. They also can't get, ask you to give you the names and phone numbers of your friends and relatives so that they can contact them directly and say, oh, Mrs. Smith told me to call. Your, your sister said you'd like to hear from me. They can't ask you to sign the enrollment form before you're ready to join. Don't feel high pressure, not the way to, to uh, buy insurance. Now, TPMOs, third-party marketing organizations, where this term became more commonly understood was when those commercials that had uh, Joe Namath and J.J. Walker came out. But it's important to understand that agents and brokers, the people that sell insurance products, they're also considered TPMOs, and they have to follow these same guidelines. Um, so one of those that's very important is they have to record all sales, enrollment, and marketing calls. Uh, and that includes any video calls. If they do a call by Zoom, then they have to record that as well with the beneficiary, and it has to be in its entirety. It can't just be a little clip of the call. And they have to maintain that recording. So this is good because over the years, we've had people who called and said, yeah, I called and I asked some questions, but I never said I wanted to enroll. So this is good because it protects both parties. If we do have someone who just doesn't recall what they said, or maybe they have some buyer's remorse, but they're trying to get out of it, if the agent's got a recording that says, yes, I want to do this, then that protects them as well. So they have to record all those calls. Uh, they can't target potential enrollees based on health status. Um, this is because with a Medicare Advantage plan, you know, you want the healthier people. Um, they're going to cost less. You're not going to have as many claims to put out. And I really don't see uh, a lot of Medicare Advantage plans engaging in some of the behaviors that we saw way early on. Uh, 20 years ago, there were some things that were just blatantly horrendous. There were, for example, they would have a uh, enrollment event, but they would have it in a building that didn't have elevators. And they'd have the event on the second floor where there was no elevator. And so consequently, people who had mobility problems couldn't get to that meeting. I have not witnessed any of that in a very, very long time, but it's still on the list. They also aren't supposed to claim that they're endorsed by CMS or Medicare or Health and Human Services. They're contracted with those, in, with, they're contracted with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, like many, many more. But CMS is not endorsing their product. They're just contracted with them to provide those services. It's just an alternative way for people to receive their Medicare coverage services. They also can't claim, claim that their plan operates as a supplement to Medicare. It's not supplementing Medicare. It's, as I said a minute ago, it's kind of a replacement for that Medicare coverage. Uh, they can't use the Medicare name or the CMS logo or pro and products uh, like a Medicare card in a mi misleading manner, like I mentioned a moment ago. Now, another thing that they've added this year is these disclaimers that have to go on all their materials. And I won't sit here and read them uh, out loud to you. You can read it for yourself. But the idea is if it, it's making sure that people know that they don't that they've got other options to get information about health insurance. Uh, it's it, the first one talks about, you know, if they don't represent all the plans that are available, where they can go to get more information about the other plans. The bottom one, if they do offer all the plans that are offered in a specific area of the country, they can use that one. But it still tells them if you'd like more information, here's some places that you can call. And the last one that you see that they list there when they talk about the state insurance program ship, that's the same as our program at the insurance department. We are the grant that funds our program is the state health insurance assistance program. <clears throat> now, uh, 
Some other things that they have to do, they've got to include a multi-language insert so that if people need their information in another language, they can get it that way. They've standardized what has to go on the ID cards for each of the plans. They've also put on in a requirement for the websites to provide instructions for appointing a representative. This is very important. People don't want to wait until they're actually sick or in the hospital before they appoint a representative who can speak on their behalf to their insurance provider. That goes for regular Medicare, that goes for Medicare Advantage, MedSEP, et cetera. So I encourage everybody to get on those websites to get those forms filled out. Uh, there's also an ability now, uh, historically speaking, people if, who were enrolled in a health plan, those health plans were allowed to send them information about the other products that they sell. There is now an option for people to opt out of that so that they don't won't receive those additional forms. Uh, it's now required that agents uh, explain the effects of enrollment uh, choices on their current coverage. So we've, again, we've had people that enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan, but they didn't realize that it was going to cancel some other coverage they had, or they wouldn't be able to see uh, certain doctors at certain hospitals and stuff. So, so agents are now required to cover all of those uh, possible consequences. Uh, clarifies the consequences of unsolicited door or prohibition of unsolicited door-to-door -door contact. They're not supposed to be coming to your house or making phone calls without your express permission. They can't have a marketing event in the same location within, a 12, out, within 12 hours of when they've had an education event. You know, I talked about the education events where they're not allowed to sell anything. Well, they can have a marketing event at the very same location, but there has to have been a 12-hour uh, wait in between those two things. Also, with that scope of appointment we talked about, when they set up that, that scope of appointment with a possible client, it has to the appointment has to be at least 48 hours in the future. These are agencies that we work with around the state. Uh, these are area agencies on aging. Uh, uh, some of them are private nonprofit, et cetera. So if you're in one of these areas and you'd like to talk to one of our counselors at one of those agencies, this is their information. And I kind of rushed through those last few slides. I apologize, but we were running out of time. So let's see if we've got any questions that we need to go to. Ray, it doesn't look like we have any questions in the chat. So I think we are good. Okay, well, that's good. Um, people, I just want to reemphasize to you we are blessed to have some really great insurance agents in the state of Oklahoma. Understand that sometimes when you get a phone call from somebody, they're not calling you from here. They, uh, an agent can be licensed in our state, but not be located here. So I always encourage people, if you're interested in purchasing any insurance product, really, go to a local agent, uh, talk to someone who's around here. Uh, it's always nice, you know, if you roof, get roof damage or something like that, it's nice to, to be able to go to talk to your agent if you feel like you're, you're not getting the coverage that you purchased. Uh, same thing with your health coverage. Those agents can be a great asset to you when you're having a problem with that insurance. So take advantage of that. Uh, talk to somebody local. If you don't have an agent that you know by name or that you know sells that product, then uh, by all means, go to uh, uh, a friend or someone else or go talk to your agent that has your homeowner's policy and see if they want to recommend somebody. So please, you know, take advantage of that um, and, uh, uh, you know, let us know if you've got any questions. Now, I will tell you, we can't, we can't endorse any particular uh, agents or anything like that, or any particular product. So, uh, okay. Anything else, Rachel? I think that's everything, Ray. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you guys in December, December 4th. That's when we will be talking about changes for next year and then be watching the website to find out what's going on um, uh, for the coming year. And I appreciate it. Y'all have a good day.